Bletchley Park housed the Government Code and Cipher School. This had two objectives, the breaking of enemy codes and the securing of Allied transmissions. They employed about 9,000 people on breaking enemy codes, but only two on the securing of our own codes. Unlike Bletchley Park, the Germans did not congregate all their cryptology experts in one department. Their main rival in Germany was Bedienst, part of the German Naval Intelligence Service. Bedienst broke the British Naval Combined Cipher No. 3 in October 1941. This code was used to encrypt all communications between naval personnel for the Allied North Atlantic convoys. This stopped when the British introduced Naval Cipher No. 5 on the 10th of June 1943. In early 1941, two years earlier, the Americans had told the British that Naval Cipher 3 could be cracked. Decrypted tunny messages at Bletchley Park mentioned that the Germans had cracked the number 3 cipher from August 1942 onwards. Why, when Bletchley Park knew that the cipher was cracked and that they were responsible for its safety, did they delay changing the cipher? Between August 1942 and June 1943, four and a half million tonnes of Allied shipping were sunk. After the codes were changed, sinkings dropped by 70%. Between the Germans cracking the codes and Bletchley Park realising it, 3.8 million tonnes of shipping were sunk. Whilst the codes were cracked, 400,000 tonnes of shipping were sunk every month. After the codes were fixed, on average, 117,000 tonnes a month were sunk. Half the tonnage sunk in the North Atlantic was because the codes had been cracked. And half of that tonnage was sunk after we knew the Germans had hacked it. Churchill said the only thing that ever really frightened me during the war was the U-boat peril. If the code had been changed when the Americans pointed out its weakness or when Bletchley Parker knew it had been compromised, Churchill could have slept soundly in his bed and the worst battle of the war would have been over.